Hi there, this is Jen and thanks for joining me today. Today I have a really fun and easy Easter project, but these can definitely be uh, modified for really any time of year or any occasion. I am going to be using a Pixie Dust Designs die called Bunny Mug and I've already assembled that, but I do have a card over on the Pixie Dust Designs YouTube channel sharing exactly how to put together the mug and all of the pieces. It's really super easy um, and not anything um, <laughs> overly complicated. It is really easy to cut out and um, assemble all of those pieces, but we are going to be making a tag box. So this is one that I've already done um, just to kind of just show. I use the same stencil as I did for that card that I just showed. And um, this is going to be a really fun and easy uh, project to make maybe gifts for coworkers or just some little uh, treat sacks for your kids. Um, those are all of the dot designs. Desi de those are the dies. And uh, what I love about, um, I love it when manufacturers put different colors um, so you know exactly who made them. Um, and especially if you drop them, uh, they are easier to find when they're colored. So I really appreciate that. Um, but these are all the supplies we're going to be using. You're just going to need two tags, um, whatever size or color that you would like. You can create your own. You can make them out of pattern paper. Um, and then one of the boxes is actually going to have some sides on them. Uh, so you're going to need some cardstock for that as well. Uh, so one of the tag uh, treat boxes will have a side and one will not. Um, but for this, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how I create the one with sides. And so I'm going to go ahead and take some distress oxides. Um, I am doing both the front and the back of the little treat box. Uh, you don't have to do both. I think it kind of adds a little bit of extra when you do both the front and the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do the front and the back. I'm using distress oxides because they're super easy to blend. And so I am using a dried marigold and I've already put that color down. And then I'm going to go in with abandoned coral. And when I am doing some ink blending, I really like to go back over that second color with the first color. So I'm not adding any extra dried marigold onto my brush. I'm just using what was already there. But it creates kind of a smoother transition between the colors, especially when you have colors that aren't exactly um, like the same shade. So um, I went ahead and do did those two colors and then I am doing mustard seed at the top of the tag and I'm going to follow the same process as I did with bringing the uh, abandoned coral in and kind of blending that out to give a smoother line instead of that harsh line. Um, and once I'm done with that, I do splatter this with a little bit of water. I don't know that I showed that. I don't know what happened with that part of the video. Um, but after I have done that, I'm going to use some Brutus Monroe. Uh, it's called Chroma Mist. I don't know that I've really used it that much, but um, I wanted some white splatter and so I went ahead and I used that. Um, and because I am a little impatient, I <laughs> went ahead and I grabbed my heat tool to dry some of this up. Um, and then anything that remained, I just took my paper towel and blotted off to dry that up. And then I did run these through my Big Shot machine just to get them to be as flat as possible since uh, the color and the um, liquid kind of warp them slightly, not too bad. Um, but then we're going to make score lines on the bottom of the tag. So I am making score lines at one inch from the bottom. And then we will set those tags aside and we're going to grab the pattern paper that we're going to use for the sides of the box. And so these pieces of pattern paper are two and a half by three. I'm going to score at one and a half or no. Let's go back. I'm going to score at one half inch, one inch, one and a half inch, two inches, and two and a half inches. You probably don't need that many. Uh, you're basically going to make an accordion side. So if you don't really want it to move much, you can just make um, two side uh, score lines and then one right in the middle just so that it has a little bit of give. 
And then to hold these two pieces or the two tags together to create the box, I'm using this, I believe this is from American Crafts. I used to buy this um, adhesive from Tuesday morning all the time, but unfortunately I don't think I have any Tuesday mornings left near me. So um, it's really strong adhesive and so that's why I like using it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, add that to the bottom of one, one of the bottom, the bottom of one of the tags, yes. <laughs> and then uh, flip that over and I'm just gonna butt that, the side with the adhesive up against the score line of the second tag. And that will give you a perfectly even um, bottom so that the top matches up perfectly as well. And so we'll go ahead and set that aside and work on the sides of the box. And so I've already gone ahead and I've scored this pattern paper at all of those score lines that we made. And I just folded it accordion style, so just back and forth. And you just wanna make sure that when you're putting the adhesive on that you're putting it on the side that is going to be facing outward. So you want your first fold to kind of fold in and then you'll fold back and forth from there. And so um, after I've got the adhesive, I'm going to go ahead and um, open up the tag and I am actually adhering this to the back of the tag or the back tag. Um, and I'm adhering it right above the score line or the crease for the bottom where it folds up. Um, and so that will get that perfectly even. And then you're just gonna close the tag and adhere it to the other side. And you might have to mess around with the, the accordion, um, the back and forth once you've got it um, adhered in there, uh, just to make sure that it is um, opening and closing or kind, you know, kind of moving back and forth um, nicely. And I did have to do that with this. For some reason I couldn't get it I don't know what I was doing, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rub my fingers on the inside to make sure that's perfectly secure. And there you have your little tag box. I think it is a super cute. And as you can see, because you have that accordion fold, that you've got a little bit of give on that box to move back and forth a little bit and it does stand up perfectly fine when I have stuff in it. I'll show you the finished product here in just a second. And here are the two completed tag bags. They've all been assembled. The first one, I just used a little baggie of trail mix, but you can definitely take like a, a little cello, cello bag and add candies in it and then attach it through the um, holes in the top of the tag. Um, basically, you just added a little bit of ribbon and that is going to finish off that one, but that one fits really nicely. And then for the bag that we created the sides for, I added a little bit of that um, I don't know what that stuff's called, shredded paper, um, you, you add to gift bags, <laughs> whatever that's called. Um, and then I added a, a few little jelly beans in there. So really could add um, any kind of small little candies in there. And then on this one, I also added the um, trim at the top. And that's going to finish off my project for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like this video or find it informative, I would love a thumbs up. If you're interested in the dyes um, or products I used, I will have that list below. So go ahead and check that out. Um, as always, I thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I hope to see you next time.